the first of the Winter Reds series. Winter Reds. We are in Bluett Springs with Matt Walker Brown. Matt, how you going? Welcome yeah, to the show. Brilliant. Keen to taste some wines, man. Keen Looking to... forward to it. We might do a little bit of an introduction first, but no, we, we can get straight into it because most people whinge that I take too long on the introductions. Ah. So I reckon in two minutes, give me the story of Matt Walker Brown. Cool. Yeah, well, the Seven Dial Stories starts back in 2000. Um, my wife and I met in London. We were working on Monmouth Street and there was a big monument um, called Seven Dials because there were seven roads that all met together. Um, we were working in hospitality and we had lots of friends. Um, what you, we used to you do... We had, had lots of friends. <laughs> we had lots of international friends. Um, right. And, yeah, that kind of uh, instilled in us the love of food and wine and also community. Um, uh, kind of fast forward a bit to 2000. I'd studied science for eight years. You look like a bit of scientist, mad scientist. Well, yeah, I was a, a bartender that had a science problem. So I... Um, okay. All the way through university, I was working in bars and so forth. It got to the point where I got the degree, got the master's, two years into the PhD, and I just realised that my heart wasn't into it. Um, I didn't think it was going to be great for the scientific community, nor me, to continue. So Marie and I decided to move down to South Australia to have a family, and um, I wanted to figure out how to marry kind of bar culture and hospitality and science. and making wine seemed to be the perfect answer. So I guess you moved probably to the one of the best spots to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, where, did we, where did we start? Where did the wine journey start for you? Um, at we were working in Cellar Door. Yeah. Um, Tintara. I worked a few vintages there and, um, yeah, just worked my way up. Having a science background, I kind of leaned into the lab side and then slowly learnt more about the winemaking but also sales. Um, I love the customer interaction, so working in cellar door was good fun. Um, so yeah. then flash forward yeah. from 2005, 14 years later, um, I'd moved out of winemaking and into sales. Um, but after that time, it was kind of in my blood doing vintages and I really missed it. And Marie said, well, why don't you start your own label? It's something you're passionate about. And um, yeah, that's when we went back to our history and thought, Seven Dials, because you wanted a wine that was about food and wine and community, and um, also kind of lent into a nice little design idea where we're going to have a different dial for every different wine and each one to have a meaning. So that means you can have maximum seven wines? Then we can do a combination of two dials on it and oh, just right keep on going from there. So um, when did this first start? And this, this was our first one that we're going to crack into? No, it was a year prior, 2020. Oh, okay. Um, because we're really small production, handcrafted, not masses of volume. The first year we only made like a tonne and a half of Cabernet. Yep. It sold out. Um, these two guys are actually all sold out. Um, more than keen to share and have a taste so that you can have a goosey gander. Yeah. And the ancestor is just been released about three or four weeks ago and that's selling through. So 2020 was the first vintage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of the planning went in 2019. Right on, come on. Let's do it. Yeah, that's not a cap on me, though. Excellent. So the Sia, the name behind this has many meanings. First one being... Okay. Touch more? Oh. So it, drinking responsibly, sure. Easy yeah. done. Um, so the seer is about looking into the future. The dial for that is the clock. Yeah. Um, it's also named after our eldest daughter, Sienna, which can be shortened to the seer. Um, unfortunately, she passed away in 2020. So this is a nice um, memory because Sienna walked in the vineyards. So the story behind it is the seer looks into the future, Cabernet. Uh, one of my favourite grapes. It's been through Europe for eons. Every kind of wine producing region has a version of Cabernet. So I really wanted to do a McLaren Vale version. So the fruit sourced from McLaren Vale? Yep. Yeah. First year it was from Seaview region um, in Next McLaren Vale. Seaview. Seaview. So it's on the ridge that faces the ocean, Vincent yeah. Gulf. So, so it's it has nice and cool. Maritime influence? Very much so. Yeah. So uh, I'll mimic that from someone else. Go I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, 
75 year old vines, so really old. So you get really deep, dark, deep flavors. Um, and yeah, when we were looking at the vines, a good friend of mine said, oh, I've got this crazy little patch, do you want to have a look? I went with Sienna and the two of us walked along there and ate wild rocket and yeah, thought we'd definitely pick up the fruit. Right. So this is 2021, year after. Yeah. Have a taste. So let's, have a, let's have a talk about the color first. Like it's pretty hard on this dark bench, but it's um, reasonably dark in color. Well, well, how would you describe it? Um, in, in Matt Walker Brown, not wine maker terms. Easy. Um, definitely bright red with some dirt. Deep purple hues. Um, it's unfiltered, unfined, okay. um, but it's still got a lot of clarity to it. And on the nose? On the nose, blackberry, cherry, really lifted, kind of. It's that darker <laughs> berry, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And hints berry of spice. Fruit. Very fruit forward. Uh, it is actually. Okay. Um, you can never smell spice. Is there supposed to be any spice? Uh, yeah, like yeah. you can get cardamom and all kinds of spice coming in, but usually a palate. Faint waft of oak. Been really yeah, careful, um, but really want the fruit to be the big kind of um, kind of player in the game to have all the influence. Do you see it? Oh, very very fruity. Mm. And um, I guess that's the whole aim of it, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, being the wine layman. I always thought Cabernet was your big, bold, like maybe don't drink too many of them yep. wines, but just notice in the last few years that they're being made a little bit differently. They're made ready to drink now, a little bit lighter maybe in profile, Absolutely. easier to drink. Uh, I guess it's opening it up to more people to buy it, good, yeah. good for marketing and sales, but um, this to me isn't a big knock, knock your head off, give you a hug in winter, yeah. but not not... You can easily share a bottle. Well, after 10 years of winemaking and tasting wines from fermentation and barrel time, I realised that there's a whole range of flavours that slowly diminish over time or if you put oak over the top of it, it kind of goes into the background. I wanted to make wines where the fruit really jumped up. Um, so, well, yeah, a bit of your scientist is coming into it <laughs> a little bit there as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we get... So many cool flavors coming from um, vines in McLaren Vale, and you get so much personality from each little sub region. So, yeah, um, that's a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, the different regions we have in the same area. Absolutely, it's um, McLaren Vale is one of the most geologically diverse wine regions on the planet. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Good work, um, easy. So, what about price point? Price point 25, 25, and 30. I want to make a wine that is um readily accessible and to be enjoyed. Um, aging is usually the next yeah, question. No, well, 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 I was going to go food brain, but we'll go aging. But if you want to aging. Run the show yourself, go for it. Mate. Yeah, more than happy to. Yeah. Um, we, I want to make one that's easy to drink. I hate the idea of buying a wine and then just having to wait 10 years before you can approach it. Yeah. It strikes me like giving a four-year-old car keys and going, don't worry, soon. Yeah. It's, it's only 14 years you'll be able to drive it. Um, so what, what would be the optimum, obviously drink some now, buy six minimum. Yeah. Drink a couple now, put a couple down for three, it, four. It will develop from up until five years and up until 10. Yeah. But then you start to lose the brightness of flavor. Right. Um, but I'll talk more about that when I talk about the ancestor. These guys are super bright and ready to go. So drink, I think. Drink now. Yeah, yeah. If you're keeping it longer than five years, I think you'll lose some of the. The pip and vigor. Pip that you get. And, oh, I'm going to store that pip and vigor. Okay, so what about we food. talked? We talked about food, and uh, yeah, obviously you've got your own theory on food pairings with wine. Yeah, and um, what what have you uh, prepared for us today? Okay, what we're going to have is some hard cheeses, um, some olives, almond, and locally made um, brioche. What are we going to have with this one? Uh, I would suggest let's go the pecorino cheese. Pecorino cheese? Yeah, because oh, it's good. got a nice salty umami which will bring out the fruit flavours. Right. Um, yeah, when it comes to food and wine matching, um, I think the rules have been thrown out the window. People can have their favourite wine and then have their favourite food. Quite often that will go well together. 
Yep. I think. Um, so you said you said earlier that people can um, have white wine with steak, and they can have red wine with fish. It's just everything's been thrown out there. Absolutely, I think there's some rules that uh, make let's make matches that don't work as well, and some that work really well. I think just lean into what works really well. Um, right, I don't need a whole stack of meat. This would definitely work with lamb and everything, but it could also go with the uh, eggplant parmigiana. Right. Okay. If you didn't have any meat, yeah. All right. Let's let's have a crack on it. Have a crack of the cheese and see Easy. what the uh, taste profile changes. Easy. All right. So, um, what, what have we prepared? Well, I think oh, you need, out, uh, yeah, yeah, touch more wine before we launch into this. Right. So I've got if I have to. Um, Pecorino from Adelaide Hills. Um, yeah. We've got some Wollonga smoked almonds and we've got some olives. Um, when I'm getting into a wine, I'm going to start. Go you, for it. When I'm getting into a wine, yeah. I love to have some food to combine with it. There are some flavors that just don't appear until you have a, some food to match with it. So, um, yeah, what do you reckon? She's a strong cheese. Yeah. I was going to put some Taleggio or some blue, but I thought mm. I'd dial it back a bit. Going back to Seven Dials and working in London, um, my wife and I have worked and lived with some Italians, um, Spanish crew, South Americans. And one thing that we really liked is how food and wine was intermarried. Um, we had the good fortune to travel through Barolo and it was in truffle season. Just mind blowing, having those wines with the smells of truffle everywhere. And um, yeah, I love it when... I was just looking for the truffles. Yeah. <laughs> No, on the plate there. Um, so the cheese, really strong, bitey cheese. As soon as I had the wine with it, that all dropped dropped away. But um, and the fruit really popped in the wine as well. Is that the idea? Absolutely. Yep. The saltiness then makes the fruit jump yep. in. Um, yeah. Not, not a cheese I would usually uh, buy to have with wine, but not that I'm any real expert. But um, I think I might um, have a bit of a look at it. Absolutely. So. Um, I still think if I think this would be a cracking barbecue wine, like a nice steak on the bar. I know Absolutely. You can have eggplant on my barbecue if you like. I'll clean the plate for you. Um, or even like a really German sausage or something like that. Yeah. Go really well with that too. So um, I think this one is a good food wine. And um, I think there's uh, – Australia can punch out some amazing quality wine without getting – up into obnoxious price levels. Um, the wines I want people to be able to say on a Wednesday, be having a barbecue with friends and be able to pull it out, not to wait for a special occasion because yeah. and sometimes you enjoy. $25. Yeah. Man, that's an absolute bargain. Easy okay. done. We've got to remind people too, all they've got to do is come in and um, we'll, be, we'll be giving away a couple of these. Yeah, yeah. I think. Literally, they could be the last bottles. Last bottles. <laughs> so. Well, I want to be a pretty good comment then. And, is he done? Um, yeah, all you got to do is comment on any of the social media platforms and uh, maybe you'll jump on and answer the best comment and then... Um, More than can, happy to. Yeah, then we can choose it from there. Yeah. Very cool. Usually I say compliment the host, but I probably won't say that when you standing next to me. But um, So what a way to start. Stunning. This well. year. It's one of... Uh, I've, I've pulled it out every now and then to... Uh, Surprise some people, and uh, I'll tell you what, it's um, right up there. And um, the price point, it's an absolute steal. Well, it all begins with good fruit and with winemaking kind of getting out of the way a bit, yep. letting it do its own thing, um, which means really gentle use of oak, not moving it too many times, avoiding additions as much as possible. Um, avoiding additions? Um, so during the winemaking process, there's a whole range of things that you can Put into the wine, uh, finings, um, you can filter it. Because it's small production and handcrafted, I don't do any fining or filtering. Right. Just crush into um, ferment, goes through ferment, barrels, bottle, and it's yeah. all done by hand. Right. I'll have a little sneak peek of that. Absolutely. Yeah, be later. 
So, cracking first wine. Um, we're going to have to finish up. Wine too, yeah. No, cool. But no problem with that. All right, wine two. Okay, so the Observer. Um, that was named after Sienna. This is after Geneva, our second daughter. Um, so it is your second baby. Yeah, yeah right. very much so. Um, I wanted to avoid making Shiraz at all costs. After 10 or so years with winemaking and tasting so much Shiraz, I wanted to do every variety other than. I wanted to do Mataro, Grenache, Cabernet, Nebbiolo, anything. But um, where I was making the wine at Bluet Springs Wine Co. Um, where was it? Bluet Springs Wine Co. See on the glasses. Oh, oh. Bluet Springs Wine Co. Yep. If you say it three times, it might sink in. <laughs> Easy. Um, Phil had some organic vines that were beside the winery. And um, yeah, after the first year of making Cabernet, I was thinking, how do I step up with the label? And I was like, what am I going to add? And he's like, well, I've got some Shiraz if you want some. And oh. um, being able to taste his wine during ferment, I went, yeah, this has got enough personality and interest that I'm going to lean into Shiraz. Um, it's one of those things that- So it was the fruit that got you. It wasn't fuel salesmanship. Was no, it probably played a, a small part, of, yeah. but um, it's just so different. Um, saying that in McLaren Vale, you could probably get a Shiraz from all the sub-regions and they'd be really different. Yeah. But in Bluet Springs, it's almost got a cool climate feel to it. Um, Which is? For the layman? Well, ah, yeah. So cool climate, uh, kind of really bright ferries, um, not too Softer, heavy, um, yeah. more streamlined, not so broad. Streamlined. So think what blackberry it? and raspberry rather than plum and licorice. Right. So um. So color wise, uh, yeah. When you first poured it, I thought, oh, that's really vibrant purple. When you first poured it, um, is that what you're going for, or no, no? The opposite. I wanted a really light Shiraz color wise, but they developed so well in 2021 that the colour just came out straight away. Yeah, right. Eh? So, um, and um, what about on the nose? Okay. Definite um, blueberry, blackberry. Not a strong, like, at, yeah. no, no big fruit punch like I got from this one. But, yeah. um, seeing, thinking more, so even almost more earthy. Mm. If that's a winemaking term, or it definitely is. It is totally. It's probably earthy, it's probably savory a for it, but savory—that's what. Um, so this is a combination of American and French oak. This is all French oak, and all the barrels. Is that, that what I'm actually smelling? Like the, yeah, yeah. The, the oak. So it's kind of like a, a toffee mocha type nose smell coming through, and that's yeah. probably oak yeah. derived. Yeah. Um, older barrels, so that the flavors that come through are subtle rather than. Dominant? Yeah, that's the difference, isn't it? Mm. So if you're using an older barrel, the oak doesn't come through the, as much into the wine. Yeah. Yeah. But a wacky thing about wine tasting is that what you can smell actually adds to what you can taste. Right. If you didn't smell it and you just tasted it, you'd have like a, a thin range of flavors. But if you smell it and then taste it, it adds complexity. So that's why people actually smell it. Yeah. Hundred percent. No, I actually didn't know that. You can smell hundreds of different flavors, say, but... but you can taste only five sweet. So, um, sour and all so, those no, kind of things. On. Say that again. So, so you, 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 you can, this is very educational. Ah, cool. I'm not sure it's correct, but it's educational anyway. But so we're we're smelling it because yeah. we can smell as a sense. We can smell. Yep, olfactory. You get all these compounds that you can smell, and your brain recognizes yep. when you're tasting. It's kind of a lot more simple. It's like sweet, salty, savory, bitter. Um, but yeah, you smell first, then taste, and it adds to it. So let's taste. Time to taste. You got to look me in the eye. Oh, Golden. Yeah. Oh, that's a totally different wine, isn't it? Isn't it? Like one spectrum to the other, almost. Yeah. I actually found that quite tanning. Mm. Obviously, it's fresh, but there's a bit of a bit of a bite to it there, where I didn't get that from the first one as much. But um, yeah. I actually tasted a lot more fruit than I smelled. Yeah, yeah. It's um, 
That's because you tricked me with what you said just before. But. Exactly, leading the witness. Yeah. Um, the thing that I like about it is it's blueberry and fruit, but it's not spicy or drying. It's like sweet and welcoming. So oh, mouth watering, though. Yeah. yeah so there's, I, I pick up a little bit of dryness from it. And yeah. It's making me go. Marketing would love it because um, I will have to have another sip just to. Absolute. And that leads me to another point with Seven Dials is we want every step to have connections, whether it's a grower, a designer, maybe uh, jumping on video, is all people that we know, friends. Yeah. Um, with the Shiraz fruit, I'm good friends with Phil and he can go, oh, the pH is sitting at 3.5, do you want to pick tomorrow? More than happy to. Yeah. In big commercial operations, it's a much slower process. You've got to organize the harvesters. You've got to, we want the process to be all about connection and community. But what about when you fully take off, which you're going to, no doubt, because your wines are amazing and you're a good looking bloke, so it'd be easy to market. Um, on, there's a reason Phil's not here as well. <laughs> we'll leave that bit in. But uh, I'm thinking, how are you going to keep it like this as, you, as your production? Well, or will you cap it at? What you can handle. We're going to cap it. Yeah. I have no delusions of grandeur. I'm not going for scale of economy. Just want quality to be the most important thing. Um, volume wise, we're not going to go massive because it's only what I can physically make by hand. Yeah. The scale wise, it's just going to be adding different varieties. Yeah, right. Eh? Um, Marie always chats to me about doing a white. I would love to do a white, um, oh, a oh, rose. Yeah. Fiano, for sure. Yeah, of course we would. As if we wouldn't do Fiano. Uh, one of the... And a rosé? A rosé, Grenache. What, a Grenache rosé? Yep. Or Mataro, who knows? Um, that's the beauty of being small. We're nimble. We can change to what happens. Yeah, and depending on the vintage. Absolutely. All right. So, food-wise, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say what I, I would really like to have with this. Um I would say a nice stew, a nice beef or lamb stew would yeah. go, it'd go beautifully with. Um, and I reckon it would, meat would fully change the flavour of this. I know that when you're not right into the meat as I am, but I think it would fully change it. Um, it would. And I also think some chocolate. Chocolate works chocolate well with wine. Chocolate really well with it. Yeah. With, a, with this sort of Shiraz, with a yeah. bright Shiraz, I think, like, and, it, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say a white chocolate. Would actually go really well with it. Fascinating. It's gonna have some nuts in it. Yeah. Like nougat or something like that in there. Should have went to Brace Girdles on the way and grabbed some, shouldn't I? Just for a little little treat. But what, yep. what are we gonna try here with it? Okay. This is where we're gonna go into the um, smoked almonds. Almonds uh, nuts, synonymous. Nuts and wine. Yeah, totally. Right. Have a try, see what you think. Okay. Um, the yeah. smokiness just adds an element. And yeah, I'd love to know what you think about the flavour of the wine afterwards. Oh. I don't know if I've ever had a wine change in taste so much. It's pretty amazing. It's not. It is amazing. It's made it, actually made it age, is what I would say. Mm. No, obviously I don't know what I'm talking about, but having the smokiness of the arm and then with the fresh. Hmm. I wonder if it's because. What are you getting? Well, I get like almost a milk chocolate, um, almost a plumminess to it. Maybe because the smokiness is so intense that yeah. your palate kind of leans into the... It takes away that bite and, and mm. you know, tannin I was talking about it at the start. Yep. That's totally gone. And it's silky smooth. So smooth. With the almonds. I would never have thought... Well, that's that. the other thing about food and wine matching is the, the mouthfeel element is yeah. because that's salty and crunchy... Then you have the wine, becomes a soft and unctuous. Wow. So once again, all people have got to do is comment and they can win this amazing wine. Um, same price point. Exactly. 25. And where can people get it? Um, direct to consumer. Yeah. Um, uh, I've got a mailing list and it's only going to be 200 strong, the Seven Dells Collective, and just communicate through that. Right. So... Um, they just got to jump on there and whenever something new is released or 
Absolutely. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, yeah. uh, Seven Dials is on both. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you ever want to ask questions or order wine, Matt at Seven Dials wines.com.au yeah, right, more website. than happy to chat not a website as of yet right putting effort into the winemaking and then we'll move on to the more digital side afterwards okay so um pretty much send you a message on instagram man i need some of that wine or perfect join the mailing list yeah yeah all right so we'll put that up we'll get everyone to join the mailing list only 200 yeah what are you at now uh we're at 146 when this airs, you can be full. Right. Get on to it quick, people, otherwise you'll miss out. So what happens if you're 201? Bad luck. Uh, man, we're flexible. Yeah, right. We're pretty relaxed. I'm not going to be too dogmatic or stringent. Yeah, but you want to get in quick, though. Absolutely. There's, over There's not that much of it made, is there? Nope, and that's the way so it's... That's a pretty good question. I forgot mm-hmm. to ask. How much of this RO that we're pretty much out of stock already of these two, yeah. but obviously there'll be more wines coming with the um, next vintage, but... How much was made of these? Okay, so, um, that was one and a half tons. That was two yeah, tons. Like, okay, so four, 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 it was eight, like pallet. eighty cartons, yep. and then sixty cartons. Wow, I would have went like that. Less than a month. Yeah. Um, and what's the plan? Just expand as as you go. Yeah, but just keep it at the size where we can look after every bottle and make sure that it's as good, if not better, than last year's. So we're going to keep it at the same size and then just add some other wines. Awesome. Oh, this is that that pairing. Easy it's done, simple. man. Well, I would never have thought of it. Smoke, oh, people are going to be doing it now. They're going to be getting smoked hummus with Shiraz. Oh, one crazy one is white bait with red wine. White bait. Yeah, the little fried fish. Yeah, Unbelievable with one. Stunning. <laughs> but I wouldn't have thought of it. Well, you got any? Not on me. No, right. But... That was fantastic. Cool. So we're going to have to crack on to uh, wine three. Right. So... so this is your third baby that's yet to arrive. Yeah, yet to come. Or a combination of the first two. Combination, okay. So um, it's called The Ancestor. Um, Why? Because it's about connecting to your history. Um, The thing with Seven Dials is every dial has a meaning, compass for the observer. Um, Geneva's had the benefit of travelling around the world and she's one of those kids that can drop into any culture and just sit and watch. Um, So... That has a compass. Uh, see her, time meant nothing. Um, she would always be looking into the future, be able to flip between being, you've got girls, uh, you know, it's, she could flip between being a five year old and a 25 year old or <laughs> within a conversation. Um, and she had the capacity to, yeah, look forward. And also, we realized how important time was. This has phone dials because it's about communicating with your ancestors. So with these two ones, I wanted to be light and bright. And then I kind of lent back to a bit of history with McLaren Vale, which is the old classic Claret, which is a Shiraz Cabernet blend. Um, Old classic. 2021 was a stunning vintage. It was nice and cool. So in the Vale, it meant that um, we had a lot of time for the fruit to slowly develop. Um, Also meant that the tonnages were really good. So um, So unicorn almost? Definitely unicorn. Yeah. So lots of fruit and high quality. Yeah. Yeah. And um, which was good because 22 kind of trotted alongside it being a double unicorn. Double unicorn. So um, 2021, there was enough um, fruit that I had some wine in barrel that I thought I'm going to try and premiumize it. I'm going to give it a bit more time, see what I can coax out of the fruit. So... Two barrels of the Cabernet, one barrel of the Shiraz. I left for another six months to allow to age. Um, and what sort of oak? It was all French oak. All French oak? But seasoned. So the barrels were three or four years old before I got them. Yeah. So oak flavor-wise, really subtle. Okay. Um, with barrels, the longer wine has or the longer wine's in them, 
the less it kind of imbues flavors, but you still get the oxygen ingress making the wine soften. So with this, allowed a little bit more complexity. Uh, 2021 was really cool, but it was kind of, you think of the hot years, creating lots of depth and richness. Yeah. The cooler years, a lot of vibrancy and a lot of fruit flavors. I wanted to leave it in barrel to see what kind of complexity I could coax out of it. So, um, so how much longer was it left in barrel? Six months. Six months. Well, you already said that. Didn't you? I should have been paying attention, but <laughs> it's all good. Nothing unusual. Um, looks wise. Looks wise, still super bright and vibrant. Yeah. Um, same year as twenty. Um, the two other wines from twenty twenty one, the Shiraz and Cabernet. Yeah. Um, because we're a small operation and um, I get to check the barrels regularly, always topped up, oxygen's not getting in, so it's really well protected. On the nose. Now, this is totally different again, isn't it? Isn't it? So the Cabernet... And it's not a mix of, like, if you said the smell of those two mixed together, isn't this? No, no. it's different. It's totally different. And when I first started, I wanted to make super vibrant, fun wines, and then... I had some extra wine. I'm like, I think there's more that these grapes can give given time. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm stoked with the results. The Cabernet's got this almost tobacco leafiness yeah, that comes in. It's a, um, a, lot, a lot different smell. It actually, I don't know if this is true or not, but it smells stronger. Yeah, yeah. could be. Could, that was, that's a no, wasn't it? Could, well, could be easy, no, but truth be told, like the biochemistry, all that happens in here, as much as we study it, we don't exactly know. There's a lot of mystery and magic that happens. And, um, and so, well, you're getting the um, cigar box, the tobacco sort of smell from it. I love yeah. the cigar box definition. And then you get the plum and leathery spice that's yeah, from that the Shiraz. Well, I was actually going to say that. And I can smell a tiny bit of, I don't know what spice it is, but I can smell a bit of a peppery, mm. yeah, all right. That's what it tastes. Let's look at me. That's the second time. You can get a wink. Mm. Wow. It's developed. And yeah. um, when I was designing the label and thinking about the wine, I was thinking, what's the next step up? A little bit more time in oak, a um, little bit of gold bling. On the label, right on. just to take it to the next level. Um, yeah, I think the extra time has paid dividends. Oh, definitely. It's a totally different wine. Um, it's always one extreme to the other. This is like a, this is a big wine. Um, As a cheeky little quip, I kind of say that these are the wines that you drink with your friends, and that's the wine that you drink with your father-in-law. Right. Well, that probably doesn't work for me because my $5 bottle here would like better. But, <laughs> um, that's the old Italians for you. But um, I would say these are sharings with mates. This is one you, you'd pull out when you want to impress someone. You know, someone from the Barossa brings a bottle over and you go, hang on a minute. Let, let's let's, let's get this. serious. Yeah. And uh, I, I love the um, claret. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to use that. I've got, I've got this old claret here. It's not old, but people will go, oh, claret, it's, it's no good at all. But that's actually a cracking wine. Yeah, totally. And I love really new, interesting, avant-garde wine styles, but there's also a lot of history that you can lean on and there's a reason why it was a success. Yeah. And what do you reckon, um, what, what could we lay that or sell it? I always say lay down. But what, what... Cellar? Uh, up to 10 years. Yeah. The yeah. extra time in oak gives more structure, so over time that will just soften it, yeah, happily. Prime to... drinking. Prime. Matt's prime drinking time. But now you would say four, four years and you'd be happy. Four years. Yep. Yeah. But so grab six, drink two now, drink two in two years, drink two in four. That works. Yeah, bring the same people around so they can share. <laughs> exactly. Things. Write tasting notes and email it to each other. Yeah. And um, yeah. And at first, I was thinking that because it's spent extra time in oak, that it'd be ready to drink straight away. Go for it. But I think, yeah, one or two years and it's just going to develop further. And what would change? It just soften? Just soften. The tannins would come in. The fruit would um, become a little bit rounder. I don't, reckon it, the, I don't reckon the fruit would dissipate very much at all. I think it's that well balanced already. That... Well, that's the beauty of being a small operation as well. And um, Because you can give it love. Totally. Love in the winery, love in the vineyard, yep. love in the barrel. 
that's why I like working with Phil from Blue Strings Wine Co. because he lets me pop in at any time, check it. Um, we bounce ideas off each other with each vintage so that we can really craft the winemaking to the vintage. I think sometimes, especially with Australian wines, we've made a wine and then bashed the fruit and the vintage to suit that wine. Yeah. Okay. Whereas I think you should go the other way where you get the grapes and then you cater the winemaking to make the best yeah, possible yeah, wine. That's a really good point. Because I, I, I often ask the question, do, I, do the um, percentages of the blends change during the, on the vintage? Yeah. That's, um, I guess that, that's why they do too. It's just balance that, get it right, depending on what the vintage is. Absolutely. Yeah. So listen, um, food wise. Food wise, I think you could go richer with this. You could go roasts, um, okay? either roast chicken or roast beef. Chicken. Yeah, yeah right, I right. think that real saltiness the, would. The oiliness of the chicken would go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what, what are we going to go? Uh, we're going to hit olives. olives. We're going to go green, we're going to go um, black olives. Well, while, while I do it, you tell people once again where they can get them wine from? Easy. Uh, just contact me, matt at sevendialswines.com.au. And yeah, just like the vineyards and the winemaking, the design, it's all about personal connection and community. Um, Is there any bottle shops anywhere? No. no. Just direct from you. Totally. There's one bottle shop in Queensland I might do it because I used to work in a bar with an absolute legend. Yeah. And um, apart from that, it's all direct to consumer. And how much is left? Uh, that is about 40 cartons and moving. 40 cartons? Yeah. So truth be told, I don't know whether there'll always be stock left, get in contact, but if you join the mailing list, I will contact you every time I release it. These get released about October. That gets released in June. Yeah. Every year we'll keep doing it. And next year I want to do something funky. Yeah, um, I think there's uh, Australian Wine Weekly. For, we love Australian Wine Weekly first. There could be a Fiano going in at Blue at Springs Wine Co. And I would love to have a little play with it and Grenache Rose. But yeah. who knows? It depends on the vintage. Right. So you've got to just scout around and pick. Yeah. But we'll whatever, keep it whatever close. Whatever tries to push on you, <laughs> what you're going to make. More I than happy. Stop, but wow. Only 40 cases left. Yeah. Yeah. So the key really is to get onto the mailing onto the list. mailing list, yeah. and then it'll be continual. And that's probably with any small producer, isn't it? Yeah, is get onto the mailing list, get onto the wine club, whatever it may be, and get and get first hand information. And absolutely, um, it all changes. I'm not the kind of person that's going to send three emails every week to you. It's just when something interesting happens. Um, when it comes to community. Phil and I have cellar door days together. Yeah. Um, we've got a few friends that are like distilling gin with Great Mark and all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, we want it to be fun and kind of small scale rather than people that you can get from larger sales operations. It's, um, yeah, more personal. Personal, yeah. Yeah. And uh, you do do that very well. And um, just while we're out, we'll just give a little plug for the new label that's coming out as well. Well, Phil and I were sitting and chatting during hours of plunging fruit during vintage. Well, I heard that Phil was doing all the plunging and you were at home. COVID's a beautiful thing. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, Phil loved it. Said uh, Matt, it was great having Matt um, helping out in the winery. <laughs> I mean, nice if he turned up, but... Well, yeah, those seven days moved pretty quickly. Yeah, perfect seven days. So. I think there was some pressing involved in there. Yeah, um, so anyway, the, um, so so the new labels. Ones. Yeah, the new label is going to be called Low Bome. So it's going to be low alcohol, low fi minimal intervention, uh, some wines with absolutely no sulfur and, yeah, just letting the fruit speak. So something new. Yeah. And a mix of the Blue at Springs Wine Co. and the Seven, Seven Dials. Dials. Well, the winemakers anyway. Yeah. And Low Bome. Keep an eye out for it. Oh, stunning wines. And it's a natural progression. Um, I worked oh, give, for... Give us a look. Quick, grab me a bottle. Let's have a quick look. Quick. Easy. I just happened to have it on hand, did you? All right. There's two. Uh, local artist, um, a friend of mine, uh, Luke Hunter, a wicked surfer, wicked artist, um, did the label. This is a pet nut, which is pet a... Pet 
coming right in vogue, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sparkling wine. McLaren Vale is never going to make a champagne, but there are a few producers um, punching out some amazing Pet Nat. Yeah. And then a Nouveau. Um, similar to... Nouveau. Yeah, just means released in the same year it's crushed. Right. So Beaujolais Nouveau, most well known. This is Bluet Springs Nouveau. So Shiraz and Cabernet all from Bluet Springs. Crushed, fermented, wait a little bit of time, into bottle. So right. super bright and vibrant. Awesome. <laughs> Could have been left in there, but anyway. Um, cheers. Not Thanks a heaps for coming on the show and sharing your amazing wines and uh, giving a Australian Wine Weekly first about what's coming next. Fiano Not a problem. and Grenache Rosé. Potentially, yeah. It's the aim. Yeah, two of my favourites. Funny about that. Easy. Yeah. Well, enjoyed it, man. Take care. Go. 60 second wine tasting. All Go. Right, Blow see. Bome. Low Bome, Pet Nat. Uh, who are you? Where are you from? Okay, Blue at Springs. It's a combination of Seven Dials and Blue at Springs Wine Co. working together, making natural wines. 60 right. seconds, let's keep it tight. No sulfur. Fermentation happens it's in pink. bottle. It is pink. It's it Grenache pink. and Shiraz pressed quickly. Have a smell, crack. smell. Ah, oh, yeasty. Oh, Almost champagne. Strawberries and cream. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, buddy. Oh, pink grapefruit, lemon zest. Pink grape. Thanks, mate. 60 second wine tasting, go. Hi, my name's Phil Tabor. This is a brand new company, Lobo Ome Wines. This wine is a Nouveau, and a we've wine? called it Bluet Springs Nouveau. Nouveau means it's released in the same year as it's been crushed. Look. It's a light wine. It can be chilled down for a barbecue. Smell? Fruity, very fruit forward. Um, bright. What sort, of, what sort of fruit? This, this fruit is actually a Cabernet, Grenache and Shiraz. It's a blend. Right, okay. So. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Bright, crunchy berries. Bright, crunchy. Get some. <laughs>